What's up guys? I am back to bring you another recap on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, my God. And this recap is delayed, but it's not denied because I actually am making it before the next episode airs and you all have been enjoying a Christmas mukbang in the meantime. Anyway, my God, plus, much didn't really happen on this episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, which is season 11, episode seven, and it is titled Sisterhood of the Traveling Peaches, my God. And much didn't happen because everyone was getting along, my God. There was always some fun shade thrown. In this episode, much did not happen. So first and foremost, I will say that although Dennis is growing on me, Portia going to the hot dog factory to work there and to put his restaurant on display, public display on one of the number one marketing tools, which is TV, my God, for any business other than a commercial. It's like my fears and concerns are, are still there. I mean, he really could be with her just for the sake of publicity and to give his business the ultimate level of publicity, my God. So to see Portia at the hot dog factory, although it does give her a storyline, so maybe it is a give and take here, but it was very funny to see her at the hot dog factory only to end up wanting to get up under his mom and make her feel like she's a part of the family and to get in the hot dog factory and to please his mom so she can let her guard down. And it was funny because Portia said she intended to only fake work for 30 minutes, my God, but ended up working for a whole entire hour. But it was great to see Dennis in his work capacity. I mean, he does make a coin. He does have a business. He does have a job. So that's a good thing. So, I mean, we're still keeping an eye on him. But again, as I said in the previous recap, um, I'm letting my guard down slowly because you never know where people are in their lives and what they're truly looking for just because we see something because we have a perspective or an opinion does not mean it's actually valid or applies in every situation, my God. And while Portia was trying her best to get on Dennis's mom's good side, she did have a sidebar conversation and mom is still concerned and wanting to know, is there something that she needs to tell them because they're moving so fast and her main concern at this point is, where is the prenuptial agreement, my God? So I will say from a standpoint of mom being protective, it was great to see that mom is actually involved in the business like she is on site. Her hands are in the dirt, making it happen at the hot dog factory, my God. So it does seem like because mom is involved and Dennis is involved, if Portia does marry him, is she going to have to be a part of the business as well? Or will she be able to continue to live like the princess that she is, my God? Well, I guess she's a queen, my God. But I'm just wondering if it's considered a family business and will Portia have to hold her own weight in the business or is her own brand enough for what they're trying to achieve, my God. And I would love to know what mom's perspective is on that as well. Next, we saw a moment with Greg and Nini and they're planning this couple's trip, which of course eventually became a girl's trip since none of the men could show up and or go. And it was so funny because when Greg and Nini were talking about various couples games, they said no pillow talk because we remember seasons ago when Candy turned all the way up on Peter and Mallory, my God, <laughs> that season when they had the pillow talk and then the whole Apollo fighting Kenya's friend, that was crazy. So they said no pillow talk, but they did decide to do a truth or a dare. And it was so funny because Greg had this whack truth question. And then he said, no, a dare would be like, you sucking my titty in front of everybody on the bus, my God. And I died because it's so funny how Nini interacts with Greg and they just be able to roll off of his shoulder, my God. Now, of course, the couple's trip turned into a girl's trip because Todd said he couldn't go. First and foremost, Mike Hill, Cynthia's boo, could not go. And I said early on in this season, the difficulties with a long distance relationship are going to be him not being able to attend some of the fun, important, and memorable things in life, my God. And so I'm not sure how she's so into him if they can barely spend any time together. But Mike Hill could not attend. Todd couldn't go. Dennis can't go because he broke his leg, allegedly, my God. And so Greg dropped out because he wanted it to be a couple's thing. And it was sad because Greg, especially with 
overcoming cancer and then his doctors wanting him to still do the chemo because there are some microscopic cancer cells there, it's sad that people weren't able to go to at least support Greg and, and go on vacation with Greg so he can have a guy's moment and a couple's moment while the girls had their moment as well, all at the same time, my God. And of course, here we are yet again where Cynthia's man cannot make it to an event. That will become so disappointing for me after a while. Now on to the couple's trip, AKA the girl's trip. It was so great to see Portia show up to Candy's home where all the ladies met up and to see her interact with Ace. And it was so beautiful to see Ace be so receptive of Portia to the point where the nanny said getting him to sit down and eat is something that he really does not do. So he is actually doing it because he really likes Portia. And it was funny because she was asking him questions and he was just saying yes and yes and yes. And I was wondering as well if he was just saying yes to say yes. But she hit him with a switcheroo and asked, do you want pineapples too? And he said no. She said, oh cool, I'm just making sure you're saying yes because you want to, not saying it to say it. But it was great to see the interaction. Portia did say that she wants to be good friends with Candy now so that she will allow her to be able to babysit Ace because she has this baby fever, my God. And there was such a funny moment because Candy realized that she had Marlo coming to her house and last season there was this whole Marlo and Portia issue because of the size of the mat and Candy said, hell, I don't even have any damn mats at my house, my God, or at least at her guest house. Now let's talk about all the ladies arrived they're on this bus for the five hour trip, my God. I'm not sure why they just didn't fly to Florida. Quick flight, 20 minutes probably would have been, 30 minutes, my God. But they took a bus trip. Now, there's truth or dare on the bus. It was so disgusting to see Eva have to suck Shamari's fingers like, I don't care how much Purell was used, my God. That is so disgusting because I figure like, underneath your nails and it was just so disgusting. But Eva took the dare and did it, my God. Then the dare for Eva, well, I think it was a dare for anyone to call their boo and sexy talk to them. And baby, I'm not sure how Eva is getting down. Maybe she's a freak in the sheets because for her to attempt to talk sexy to her man, she couldn't even find a nasty, salacious or seductive word had that thing ready for me. What? Girl, bye. That was such a turn off. It was so dry. But the next dare was for Candy to show her titties to her man while everyone is watching on FaceTime. She said no, she's not showing Ariola. hell no. But then they suggested for her to do the sexy talk and have phone sex with her man. And of course, Candy would be the winner of that because she has been open and free. And it was funny because Todd thought that she was drunk and I think Todd thought she was drinking because he was aware that she was on the bus at the moment with the ladies opposed to it being like in her hotel room. But Candy had the right words, was very descriptive and sexual and sensual. So it was no surprise everyone expected her to do well and thought it would be great for her to give everyone lessons on how to have a phone sex conversation, my God. Next, there was a truth question for Portia and when Nene asked, Portia, has Dennis dated somebody on the bus, my God, or has he dated someone that someone knows on the bus, my God? And of course, Portia spoke up and she was chill about it, although she was looking very nervous and skeptical about Nene even asking this question because at this point, if you're close, why aren't you asking this personally or asking her that personally, my God? And of course, Candy spoke up, ready to spill the tea. She said her friend dated Dennis recently, my God. And the scary part is the fear on Portia's face because when you say, how recently, that lets one know that your gears are turning and you're adding things up in your head. And I think that Portia kind of lied and got tongue twisted and tongue tied because she was trying to defend Dennis and not herself because she said they were in a strict monogamous relationship for a while now. But Candy called Portia out and said, well, you at Shamia's birthday party in May with a whole other guy. So how could you be in a strict monogamous relationship? And then Portia switched up and said they were dating other people and then had a break at a moment and so on and so forth. So I could tell that Portia was concerned. And even Portia did say that of course, Candy could not wait to spill the tea, my God. Finally, the ladies arrived to their destination, my God. There were some great rooms. I loved how Nini did the whole room process. She had them pick a number, then pick a name, and they had to designate 
designate the name of the person to take a certain kind of a room. Marlo's shady ass gave Tanya the bunk bedroom, although everyone thought that Cynthia was getting it, or actually Cynthia thought she was getting it because originally Cynthia was the only one who was not showing up as a couple, my God. But there was a sexy chocolate chef. I had a crush on that guy from, if you guys remember the show, not Hollywood exes, but Atlanta exes, because I believe he was the guy who dated CeeLo Green's ex-wife during that season. And I'm not sure if they're together or married or not, but they did have a nice public relationship, but not sure what their status is on the ship as of yet or currently, my God, but I believe that's the guy who was the chef. Now, that whole moment with Eva having a secret bachelorette party, my God, while she's claiming it's secret, Portia said she had been invited a long time ago. Now, I'm confused because if Nene is your big sister, Eva, why would you not invite your big sister? And then someone who you also asked to speak at your wedding and Nene had every right to be offended because why am I speaking at your wedding but wasn't important enough to be invited to your bachelorette party? Even if I could not make it, let Nene have her own choice to say that she was going to be busy. But Eva gave this old fake whack answer talking about, well, Nene is so busy. I wouldn't think she had time to go to the strip club just for my little bachelorette party. Like, girl, that is so corny. Give people the chance to say no before you make a decision for them, my God. And it just sounds like you didn't want her there for whatever reason. But I am curious why Portia wasn't there if Portia was previously invited. And then I'm not sure where Portia's loyalty lies. Well, maybe it lies with Nene because I was thinking she was cool with Eva, but she definitely did call Eva out in this whole situation for inviting her and no one else. And then everyone else was offended because it's weird. If you guys were on a bachelorette party, you're on a TV show, these are your good girlfriends now, at least for the show. Why not have them come along unless Eva was just trying to have a private bachelorette moment without cameras and TV involved. Last but not least, the conclusion to this whole Shamari being in her feelings for Portia saying she needed a makeover. Candy had already said at Shamari's twins party that Eva was the one who made the makeover comment. It was not Portia. So to find out that Shamari's ass is still mad at Portia and then I guess she's still mad because she's wondering why Portia shaded her and Portia said she shaded her and didn't introduce her to Dennis because she heard that Shamari was talking about her behind her back claiming that she made the accusations of her getting a makeover when it was really Eva and I do give much props to Candy for being consistent and reminding Shamari that no baby it was actually Eva who was shading you not Portia so they made up they're hugging and kissing. I feel like it was a fake beef just for some drama that doesn't exist and because no one was actually at odds at this moment. But we do see in the future on the upcoming clips that Marlo and Shamari are going to have issues, my God, because this episode ended with Marlo suggesting that Shamari does need a makeover and she would love to style her, my God. And I will say... Although I like the guy Julian, I'm not sure that Shamari has the greatest fashion options because those items that she had pulled out, I mean, those rhinestone studded sheer pants to go under a black bodysuit was cute, but everything else was whack. My God. So that's about it, guys. Just a quick little recap on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I want you guys to have a happy holidays if we don't get our next recap before the holiday. And please follow me on all social media outlets. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications. Become a part of the notification ministry share this video and thank you guys for tuning in bye guys